forget about your responsibilities. There's a new laser update. I spoke about it with Peppy, who's in the O's office today with Tom94. I can show Tom in the office. You mind being video? <laughs> and in this update, Argon was added for Tycho, meaning the Argon skin is finally implemented for all modes. I thought Tycho was actually going to be the easiest because it's got the fewest elements, but we implemented Tycho in a very convoluted way. Like every other rule set, we define the size of the playfield. So in OS, it's 512 by 384 pixels, and every element is based off that size. But in Tycho, it's more like the playfield is one high, and all the elements are fractional components of one. It works okay most of the time, but sometimes not. So adding a simple skin involved rewriting how Tycho worked in Laser. This really just shows that there's more going on behind the scenes with each update than you might expect. The swell is still work in progress. It turns out that Tycho swells, aka spinners, were not actually skinnable in Laser until now. So yeah, I, I've been like figuring out whether I should actually implement skinning support for like legacy skins as well, since it's not there. But uh, that's, yeah, that's about it. If you have a better idea for a name for Tycho spinners, then let me know. I'll assume that's directed at anyone listening. Anyone listening. <laughs> so Argon exists for all rule sets, but it's nowhere near done. What comes next? Peppy's immediate plan is to review playability across all modes, with extra focus on Mania, then add object customization in the skin editor, and eventually make changes to the HUD once Flight finalizes the design. Look forward to all that in the coming weeks. Dark combo colors. They're annoying, and with this new setting, you don't need to worry about them. Yeah, so this is one that Smoogie came up with to basically normalize colors into a certain range. It's just a slider where 0% is no adjustment and 100% is a lot of adjustment. And yeah, so if you choose 100%, it's going to bring all combo colors to a rough mid-ground, whereas if you set it to zero, you'll get pure blacks and pure whites. The default is around 20 to 30%, I can't remember which of the two, but on most beatmaps I've tested which actually have bright combo colors, it's not that noticeable. It's small enough of a change that I was happy to have it as a default. A lot of you seem to like the freeze frame mod from last update, so you'll be happy to know that this bug where slider ticks appeared way too early is now fixed. And also, Argon Spinner now has these bars. There's nothing to really say about it, but it looks cool. Let's shift gears towards the unbiased and objectively best part of OS, mapping or more specifically the editor, where these two options were added to the view menu. In stable, background dim in the editor only affected testing, but in laser it applies to the editor background too. And this show hit markers thing is essentially the opposite of stable's hit animations toggle, allowing you to view maps exactly how they'd look in gameplay. This perfect curve option is one of the coolest additions to the laser editor. It makes complex sliders significantly easier to design, but stable doesn't support this curve type. That sucks but it won't suck for long. Yeah, Oli Bombi implemented a set of functions for his own tools, which allows converting the multi-segment laser sliders back into a format that Stable can understand. So the plan going forward is probably to have two versions of the OSU file, one for Stable to read from and one for Laser to read from. Uh, that's not done yet, so while this change is quite cool and important, uh, it's not going to be visible in the game just yet. Once it is done though, you'll be able to map with all of Laser's editor features while still being compatible and submittable through Stable. This is a big thing for mapping and will only be more valuable as Laser's editor continues to improve. And one last thing in the editor, skimming the timeline won't cause you to go deaf anymore. Thanks, Peppy. As with every Laser update, there's a ton of miscellaneous small changes, so I'm just going to list a few of the most interesting ones. First, tablet area is built into Laser. This isn't new, but these numbers in the aspect ratio were slightly incorrect, and that's fixed. Laser sends chat messages in real time now, as opposed to the massive delay that you're probably familiar with from Stable. If your username is Crystal, you might also appreciate that relevant mods stay enabled when switching between game modes. Transitions are being polished too, like in Song Select. And in the main menu. Nekodex also added a sound for clicking disabled things. And to match all these sound effects, hover visuals have a more snappy, sharp feel. Okay, you've made it this far. You've proven that you're dedicated to laser updates. So let's get technical. Uh, Tom94 has been here in Japan, and that has triggered a lot of discussions about performance-related concerns. And he's also been helping out in the background to make some of these efforts come to fruition. 
So we're going to walk through this performance section. Pepe explained each of the changes to me in basic terms, and even those basic terms were too convoluted for this video, leading to an alternative format. So, so I say like a thousand words and you summarize it to three words, that sounds good. The first change here sends fewer reports to your GPU's garbage collector, making the game just stutter less. In this one, the game is supposed to pause CPU usage every millisecond, but this thing called thread sleep wasn't doing that perfectly, causing some repeat frames. Essentially, more blue chunks here means more unique frames. This third change reduces the amount of times laser interacts with the GPU, which will have more impact as laser is further optimized. Change number four optimizes the hit error meter through pooling, which we've discussed before, and I'll let Peppy have the honor of explaining this last one. Even if you don't play on laser yet, this could impact you. I don't even know how to say this in a way that's not technical. Basically, uh, an application can run a command which says that other apps on the PC can jump in and do their thing if they're waiting for CPU time. And until now, between every game frame, we've told the OS that it can let other applications run. This change removes that. Especially in cases where a user has a lot of other applications running on their PC, this could be beneficial. And if it is, then we may actually retroactively apply it to stable. So okay, millisecond differences might not seem like much, but when paired with other performance improvements in literally every release, it really can have an impact. Laser is constantly upping performance for dirty FPS hogs like you, and Tom here is helping make that happen even faster than before. I mean, Tom's still here and we're still going through performance issues. A lot of people keep bringing up performance concerns with Laser, and yeah, I will say that we're not done. We have a lot in the pipeline, like there's three or four ongoing efforts. I think we may see like, huge improvements in the coming weeks. And that's about it for this update. There's more new stuff in Laser that couldn't fit in this video, so look through the rest of the changelog if you really want to know everything. Which you definitely do want to do. I need to sleep.